Okay, let's stay off the phone. Let's pay active attention. Okay, uh, this is my portfolio. Uh, I think the most about religious and uh, our, our religious or spiritual af uh, affiliation, gender, and race. The reason I think about these more is because uh, religion, basically, we live by our religions. If you're a Christian, you live by what the Bible says, and you act upon those things that you believe on. If you're atheist, you act upon, you act upon what you believe uh, spiritually. So I think that affects a lot of what we do day to day. And uh, our gender separates us, I mean, 50-50. Um, and people who identify as, as non-binary, it affects a lot of what we do day to day, our gender. And our race affects us probably the most because culturally we're all so different. We all come from different places around the world. So I think it matters a lot uh, uh, about our race. Uh, I think the least about sexual orientation, first language, and age. Sexual orientation, I mean, you date who you date, you like who you like. I don't think it affects much of uh, how you act uh, with other people. Communication is based off, you know, what's in you, not who you prefer to date. So I, I feel like it doesn't affect much. But uh, first language, I mean, if you if you speak the same language, does it really matter what you spoke first? If you can communicate as people one one on one, then I think nothing else matters. And age. I mean, when I go to the skate park, I I'm talking one. I'll be talking to an eight year old, and the next I'll be talking to a fifty year old. It it really doesn't matter the age to me. If if, if I can if I can be friends with you, that's all that matters. Uh, I would like to learn more about my uh, my national origin. Because I mean, I'm a mix. My dad's white and my mom's uh, Hispanic, so I never really knew what uh, to identify as like racially. Because some people would say I'm white, and then others would like say I'm Hispanic or like Mexican. I'm not Mexican, but I'm, I'm Hispanic. But you know, uh, but yeah, I just I, I I think it's really interesting to to learn where you come from and just uh, the people that came before you to make what happened to make you possible, you know? Uh, the most important identi identity that I perceive myself with is age, because, um, I mean, as you get older and older, a lot of things change, and you eventually have to uh, support yourself and provide for yourself. So I think it's it's uh, very important to, to realize how old you are as a person. Uh, I feel like people view you based most on your identity. Um, because, I mean, as a man, um, I don't think uh, a woman would easily, as easily get along with me as another man would, and women get along easier with other women. So I think it's it's just, it, you have better chemistry automatically if you are the same gender, I think. Uh, the most challenging skill for me was probably identity. Because um, the characters in the book were doing very intricate things, you know, uh, in Shadow Shakers, she literally had magical powers. I don't have that. I don't have magical powers. In Parable of the Sour, she was basically a poet. She was a philosopher almost. I would say she is a philosopher, actually. Uh, I just, I just sat at home and watched SpongeBob. So um, it was, it was sometimes very difficult for me to, to connect to the story. So uh, I think this is a good example of how I struggled. I just wrote, I connect with being tired. I think it, it's not a very elaborate connection. So I think it's a good example of how I struggled with the skill. Over time, I did get better and find new things and better things I connect with, I could connect with that, that show I'm actually understanding the story. Uh, over time, I think I connected, I learned how to connect better with a story and a book and characters and things that are happening in the book better. So it led to more uh, intricate connections. Uh, intellect made me better understand uh, the butterfly effect and how one thing can affect many other things. Here I wrote, uh, I'm smarter about how show business can affect mental health. This example shows how uh, I can make the, the uh, 
the uh, inference that the show business affected the mental health and mental health affects a lot of things. So that one thing affected a lot of other things, which causes the butterfly effect. So the identity or no, the intellect help me uh, better understand butterfly effects. Uh, a, re a revelation I had is that uh, the person with power controls the people who have equity and the people who are oppressed. So, I mean, if if you have power, you can, you have, you can control other things and the people that are oppressed don't have power because they're being oppressed by power. So, um, that's usually what uh, what I uh, would see when I was doing criticality. I would see that the person with power uh, directly affects the the lower levels of, and, uh, of equity and oppression. So it, it made me a better person by realizing that uh, it, it made me more empathetic by realizing that gaining power just brings other people down. It brings other people down. So it's best to just be who you are and not want the whole world. Uh, the assignment I'm most proud of is my op-ed because I spent a lot of time on it. It says a year I spent three straight hours on it. And it made me feel really good about myself when I was done. I had a huge dopamine hit. Uh, but uh, when I got it graded, I actually failed. I got a, like a 420 out of 700. Uh, but the effort and the feeling that I got after is what mattered to me most because at the end of the day, I didn't let a letter grade affect my mood. So yeah, that's that's the lesson that I learned from getting an F. Uh, the quality of my effort is not defined by a letter grade to me. The assignment I can improve most on is just any PBA revision. I just I, I would I would click on the assignment and I would just speed through it. I would look at the comments and just try to fix it in any way I could. And sometimes I didn't fix all the comments. Sometimes I didn't fix any at all. I would just turn it back in. So I feel like I could uh, I could work better on that. And I could uh, definitely strive to do better for, for myself. And, uh, and yeah, just to always work towards better because you, you're never, you can never be satisfied. I know it's not good to, to want so much, but it's also never good to be so satisfied with, with what you have at first. There's always, there's always another one. Uh, what helped me learn the most in this class was focus. You know, if you just keep your head up and you listen, it, you can succeed in this class very, very easily. So uh, that's, just, that's just how personally I learned the best uh, because a lot of things happen in this class. You, it's very easy to miss something you know, you, you lose focus real quick. Oh, someone, someone's talking real quick. And you, and you can miss some very important information. Uh, I struggled with staying awake in class a lot of the time when we were reading the Macbeth and stuff. That was very hard. I ended up, I ended up missing a lot of important information, I'm not going to lie. But um, I realized that when I did, when I did focus and I was paying attention to what we were reading, I was very, I was, easy, I was able to easily and efficiently get the work done. Uh, the, uh, I just took what I needed to improve on most and, or from, from my, uh, other cover letters, I took what I needed to improve on and I just worked my hardest. Well, I worked like 80% of my hardest to, to improve on, uh, what I needed to improve on and to, to reach my goals. Uh, some of the goals from my last couple of letter were met. Some of them were met, but uh, there were a lot that were also not met. But uh, again, the effort is what counts for me. My main goal is for soft for, for sophomore year is to just stay on top of everything and to, to make sure I feel like like I'm I'm on top of my work and I uh, I know everything that's going on in all of my classes. I'm staying on top of work homework, test, and I'm studying. That's, that's my main goal. Uh, my second goal is just to maintain a minimum of a 3.1 GPA for both semesters. When, I, when my GPA dips below 3.0, I just, I, I feel good because I'm not, I'm just, I'm chilling and I'm not caring, but at the same time, it's, it's very important to, to have above 3.0 for me because I don't know if I'm gonna go to college, but just to play it safe, you know, I like to have above that 3.0. 
And my third, my third goal is to just, you know, enjoy school. What else could, what else, what, what more could you want other than to, to just enjoy class and have fun and make friends, you know, and stay sane. So, okay, that's my, that's my proposal. Wills and grows. What do we have for Wills and grows for Willie? 